Hey alligators, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty, and today's video is going to be a paranormal storytelling type of story time, and also a collab with my friend Colin Barry here on YouTube. So when you guys are done watching this video, make sure that you click the link below or here on the screen somewhere to go over and watch his video on his channel. He will also be telling a spooky story for the month of October. So this is the first of many videos I plan on filming that are going to be a little bit scary this month for the season of Halloween. I also tried to change my backdrop a little bit for this, just temporarily to, I guess, lighten or I should say darken the mood. I know that I've shared paranormal, spooky, haunted story times of my own in the past on this channel that you guys really seem to enjoy. This is a story about somebody else and before I jump on in and start sharing with you guys everything that happened in this crazy paranormal story about the Polaroid ghost, I just want to read what Colin texted me. So when we were planning this virtual collab and picking out the stories that we were going to share with you guys, Colin texted me saying, just be very careful, Ali, because I did the Robert the Doll video, and ever since, a lot of creepy stuff has happened to me. So make sure it's safe to tell the stories. Robert doesn't like when you use his photos, and I did in the thumbnail, so some creepy stuff has happened to me. But most ghost stories are harmless, so I'm really hoping this one is as well. I haven't seen any other YouTubers really talk about it, so I may or may not be the first, but... Without further ado, we're just gonna jump on into the story, and this story is in fact 100% true. To this day, I believe it is still one of the most convincing pieces of evidence that ghosts are out there and ghosts exist. This story takes place in 1985 down towards Los Angeles. A man by the name of John Mikowski moved into a home, and it wasn't a brand new home, but it was a brand new home to him. The house was built in 1908, and when he moved in, he sensed a lot of paranormal activity. There just seemed to be a presence living there, noises he couldn't explain, things like that. And I picked up on those sort of things before in my apartment when I went to that haunted hotel that I've made story times about. So I know the feeling and if you guys have ever experienced the paranormal, then you probably already know what I'm talking about. Basically, he could just tell that someone or something was there that he couldn't see. So one day, John had his other friend over and they were talking about some of the things that they had experienced. And they were like, honestly, maybe we should sort of investigate a little bit. His friend that was over at his house had this pole they took a picture of the house just randomly throughout the house in like different rooms and such and white whispers I don't even know what to call it white lines white shapes were appearing on the image of the Polaroid and everyone knows what a Polaroid is right it develops right in front of you so they would take these pictures and immediately they would see these shapes these ghost like little figures in the picture start to emerge. So they were like, okay, this is a little bit weird. Maybe we have some bad film. Maybe the Polaroid, something's up with it. I don't really know, let's try again. They got out a new pack of footage, put it in the Polaroid, and the same thing happened. But this time, it almost looked as if words were starting to appear on the Polaroid. They were trying to talk themselves out of it a little bit, like, nah, this can't be right, something's going on here. Like, it's not a ghost, it's not anything paranormal. Like, we're just getting paranoid. So they went and told their friend about it, who was a total skeptic, didn't believe them, he took the Polaroid and jokingly was like, is anybody there? Took a picture and this time when that Polaroid developed, it said yes, clear as day on the Polaroid in like the shape or outline of a ghost. So at this point, obviously their friend believes them. So it's the three dudes shook AF. They're just trying to figure out what's going on here that they're not going insane. So of course they ask the spirit, the ghost, whatever it is, some more questions. They say, what is your name? This time the Polaroid develops and it says right, W-R-I-G-H-T like the last name of somebody perhaps. So now not only do they know there's a ghost in their house that is speaking to them through the Polaroid, but now it has a name. So they say, are you a good or a bad ghost? And it says, friend. It replies friend on the developed Polaroid. One of them asks the ghost, right, they say, who were you? And it replies on the developed Polaroid in Latin, which they had to translate to among other things, a murder victim. One of them asks the Polaroid ghost right, where do you go when you're not here? And it replies, flux, F-L-U-X. Also known as the process of flowing in or out or constantly changing, something that a ghost would do, right? John and his two friends proceed to contact somebody higher up about this who could make it public, who could do something, help them get some more answers. And at the time, it was a TV show called Sightings on Fox. The crew was very interested in their story, wanted to investigate further and work with them. So they came over to John's house, the haunted house with the ghost inside and they proceeded to do the same thing again to see if it would respond but this time there was no answer right the ghost through the polaroid was no longer speaking to them at this point you could tell that the camera crew started to doubt that this was a real story because they had not been there the first time when it happened obviously and john's friend was like hey just give us one last chance he took the polaroid and he said are most spirits good or bad and this time the polaroid developed saying there are numerous remedial lemurs which 
doesn't make sense at first glance, but when you actually translate the word lemur, in Roman mythology, that means night walking spirits of the dead. Just let that sink in for a second. They're basically saying that they're all just a bunch of night walking spirits of the dead. Like there's so many out there, there's no way to really tell. That's the way I interpret it at least. The camera crew, everyone from the Fox show, they start to get really excited. They want to continue with the testing. So they get a new package of film to make sure that that film was not tampered with in any way, which I honestly don't even know how somebody would do in the first place. But I mean, I guess it could happen. They're going to be a little bit skeptical because this is just such a crazy thing to actually experience and see with your own eyes, right? They take out a new film, they ask it some more questions, and it begins responding to everything this time. Someone asks, right, the ghost, are you here for John or the house? And it responds, the guardian spirit of a man or place, which is actually in Latin. That's what it translated to. There were many other questions that followed this, but the last one that they got around to asking was, right, the ghost's name, will you be with them for a long time? In which the ghost replied on the Polaroid, all this is over now. Never responded after that. Not for the rest of the day, not ever. That was the last time this ghost communicated via Polaroid. This aired on Fox. Everyone was shook if, <laughs> literally crazy. Like this was a real story that happened. We didn't even have the technology back then to fake or Photoshop this sort of thing, especially on video. So after this aired, a ton of people reached out to John and his friends asking to meet with them. They wanted to do their own research, their own investigation psychics, science people, skeptics, just random people who found this sort of story fascinating because like who wouldn't? I definitely think it's interesting. And eventually this one psychic by the name of Peter James reached out asking to investigate a little bit further. They agreed to meet with him. So he came over to the house and he said that he had some sort of intuition that this ghost may be somewhat linked to three names, Robert, Gilbert, and Amelia, which John immediately recognized as the people who had previously lived in the house. But then the psychic was like, no, no, that's not right. I don't think it was the people who lived here before. I think it was someone else. Then he went on to say that he believed the house, the location it was in, may have previously belonged to a sacred site area of Native Americans in the past and that it could be someone from that who he believed was possibly buried underneath the house. So of course John and his friends did their research because at this point they were very invested in what was happening and they really wanted to get some full answers I guess, especially considering the polar ghost wouldn't even talk to them anymore. So they did some digging around the house. They never asked actually dug underneath the house because it just didn't make any sense for them money wise property wise and effort I mean honestly who really wants to try to dig up a dead body like not me but they did find pottery and some other small artifacts that suggested that this did in fact belong to some sort of Native American sacred sighting area a lot of the dots were connected from this the psychic wasn't just making things up they actually took some of these pieces of pottery etc to an archaeologist who said the same thing they said this was most likely from around that era of time with the Native Americans and the sacred site area and this would have been their pottery etc based on like how old this is so that's about as far as they got answer wise with who this right ghost really was and a lot of people have tried to get the same result from paranormal activity in their houses but this was like the most organic I believe real and first occurrence of it ever happening this was on live television and it was a while ago so I just wanted to bring some light back up to it to put you guys in the mood for this October and all the spooky videos that I have coming up that Colin does as well because like I said check out his video below when you're done watching this one because he has a similar story that's going to be really scary for you guys to hear about. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, if you want more like this, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that. Comment down below. Subscribe to my channel. Also subscribe to Colin's when you go over and watch his video. Also I do have a Patreon if you guys want exclusive photo shoots, private Snapchat, etc. That will be linked below in the description. Follow my social media and I will see you guys in the next video. Later alligators. Bye.